So we're simplifying each radical individually. Then we're looking to see if we have like radicals that's the same root, same radicand. After that, we try to add or subtract them depending on the signs. But we're just adding and subtracting the coefficients once we get those like radicals. We're going to start on the first one in just a bit. Give you about 30 more seconds for the first one. So let's look at our first example up here. Now, what type of roots are we dealing with? Is this common root, is that satisfied for this problem? Oh, they, all have, they all have square roots, that's great. So at least we have square roots everywhere. That means potentially we could combine these radicals. If we didn't have square roots, if we had like a square root, a cube root, and like a fourth root, we could do anything with this thing. We wouldn't be able to add those together. You with me on that? Okay. Well, okay, so next up, we got to simplify these because right now we know we can't add them together or subtract them. We certainly can't take 75x minus 27x. That, that doesn't work at all. We've got to have exactly the same radical, exactly the same radicand to be able to combine these just like we would any other like terms. When we combine these, what type of root are we dealing with again? So unlike the last example that I erased, we're not looking for perfect cubes anymore. We're looking for perfect squares, it's like 4, 9, 16, 25, those numbers. So can you give me, in the square root of 75x, a perfect square that goes into 75? Good. A number you can take a square root of, that's 25. So I know that we got 25 times 3x. How about the x? Can I simplify the x at all? No. Oh, the power is 1, the root is 2, the power is less than the root, we can't do anything with that. So this is, this is much we're going to be able to simplify is at 25 minus 3. Well, the 3 is going to stay there. What is that 3 doing next to that root? What's that mean? Okay, so we're going to leave that hanging out till the very end. We just know it's 3 times whatever else we get. Now the 27x, what number goes into 27 that you can take a square root of? Because we have a square root. Good, okay. And lastly, we got 12. Is there a square that goes into 12? 4 times 3. Yeah, the reason why we're doing this, we can take the square root of 25 and 9 and 4. That's going to help us simplify that. Now it's a good part. We get to cross this stuff out. So we're going to cross out 25 and put a what, folks? And the 3x, I can't do anything with that. That's not a perfect square. The power is less than the root here. So I'm going to get the square root of 3x. Minus, I do have a 3 out here being multiplied. That 3 is going to be there being multiplied by whatever else I get. Now the square root of 9 gives you a 3. But again, I get a square root of 3x. Plus, square root of 4, I know that thing is 2. And lastly, I get a square root of 3x. What's the next thing we're supposed to do? Multiply. Yeah, we're going to multiply. Before we combine our like radicals, we are going to multiply. I want to make sure we get this number right so we're not mistakenly subtracting 3 or 6 or something crazy. Okay. So of course, we get our 5. Square root of 3x, we get, how much does that give you? Nine. Yeah, good. We are multiplying here, right? Those are a multiplication problem. We have 5 square root of 3x minus 9 square root of 3x plus 2 square root of 3x. Can we combine all of them? Yep. Mm -hmm. Notice if we would have got one thing different, like if that was like a 2x or a 5x, we would have been able to combine the first two, but not the last one. We've seen a problem like that in here before, I think, yesterday we saw one. How much are you going to get? Square root of? 3x. Okay, so that, that root doesn't change, just like like terms don't change. We're just basically adding the coefficients of those things. And you said negative 2? Exactly. So negative 2 square root of 3x, that's your final answer, as far as you can go on that problem. So combining all this together, 
you get something that looks nothing like it, do you? Now, if you, if you just looked at those numbers, the coefficients of 1, negative 3, and 1, well, you're, you're not going to get negative 2. If you look at this and add those together, you're certainly not going to get square root of 3x. So what you start with doesn't even come close to describing what you end with. You really have to do the simplification, then look at how to combine those. Okay, the next one, we're not dealing with a square root anymore, we're dealing with a cube root. So the way we're looking at this, we're going to try to find perfect, not squares, not squares, perfect cubes. So this problem actually tricks a lot of people. It's not meant to, but it does. Because you know what a lot of people do here? They go, oh, I don't have to deal with 81. And when I cross it out, it's going to give me a 9. See how they can fall in that habit, though, right? It's not correct. I mean, the, the cube root of 81 is not 9. The square root of 81 is. Right? But we're not dealing with a square root. We're dealing with a cube root. So we're trying to look for a perfect cube that actually divides 81. So if you put 9 here, if you just cross it out and put 9, that's not the way to go. We're not dealing with a square root. Actually, what we have is a cube root of, let's, let's talk about 81. Can you think of a number that you can take a cube root of that goes into 81? There's only a couple choices. There's 8, 27, 64. Which one? 27 times 3 gives you 81. Now, the x to the fourth, can we simplify the x to the fourth? x times 3 times x. x to the what now? Third times x. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to work because I know the power now matches the root. Don't forget about this 3. Power now matches the root. This is still x to the 4th. We've done this several times now. Now let's work on the next one. How about this? How about that 3? Can I bring out that 3? No. Okay, so there's nothing I can do with that. Cube root of 3 is, I don't know, we're going to leave it. There's not a perfect cube that goes into that number besides 1, and 1 really doesn't help us out at all. x to the 4th, though, we're going to be able to do the same thing. We're going to do x cubed times x. So really, we're just simplifying like you did a couple homeworks ago, just that simplification process two times. Then we're looking to see if we're going to have any like radicals, and then we start adding or subtracting them. Okay, everybody, cube root of 27, what do we get? That's going to go outside the radical. Cube root of 3, what do we get? Okay, so I'm going to circle it. Anything I circle stays inside my root. Cube root of x cubed, what do we have? And the cube root of x? Stays inside. Oh, we're going to circle it. Okay. Don't forget that you do, in fact, have a cube root. You've got to have that. What's left inside of my cube root? 3x. Yeah, that's exactly what we have circled, right? What we couldn't take out, what we couldn't simplify, we leave. Now, over here, we have a different situation. We don't have any numbers that can pull out of our root. All we have is a 3, which we can't do anything with. We've got an x cubed, which we can. That gives you an x. But then we have an x, which we can't do anything with. So inside of the radical, you have a cube root of 3x again. So we've simplified pretty much two problems in one. We know how to do this pretty well. We know how to do this pretty well. And now we look to see if we can add or subtract these. Can you add those together? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah we, have, we have exactly the same thing here. We have the same like terms. You have an x and an x to the first power. Cube root, cube root, 3x, 3x is a radicand. That's identical except for the coefficients. That's what we want to have happen. That's how we combine like terms, or in this case, like radicals. We have a coefficient of 3. We have a coefficient of 1. So when you add those together, you should be getting 4 out of that. So this does count for something. So 4x cube root of 3x. That's your final answer as far as you can go. Raise your hand if you feel okay with this so far. Okay, good, all right. Now, you know I was going to do it to you. How do you deal with some fractions? How do you deal with some fractions? Oh my. Can you deal with fractions? Yeah. Sure, and you basically you just subtract fractions, right? What do you need in order to add or subtract fractions? Great, yeah, you, you need one. Now, before you rush off and go ahead and find your common denominator, what I'd like you to do is simplify your radicals first. Okay, this, this, is not, this is not the same thing as what we did yesterday where we combined our radicals because there's no radicals on the denominator. Otherwise, that's exactly what we would be doing. Are you with me on that? If you have those two radicals, sure, combine them first. If you don't, in this case, we have a radical here, no radical here. We can't combine. There's no, nothing to combine. Radical here, no radical here. There's nothing to combine. 
Okay, if there were two radicals, absolutely, you would make that one radical first and try to simplify your fractions. Right here, what you can't do, you cannot combine this under one radical because that one doesn't even have a radical. Not your happy art with that. So in this case, yeah, we, we're certainly going to simplify these, these roots. Well, this one, we can't. But the square root 75, we actually did that earlier in this class today. That's going to be, if you think about that, that's 25 times 3, that's 5 root 3. You with me on that? So we're going to simplify that as 5 root 3. Five root three over nine minus root three over two. If you're not getting how I'm getting five root three, this is the twenty-five times three. We take the square root of twenty-five, that gives you the five, and then we have that root three. So do do this step, we've done that a couple times. Make sure we can get five root three out of that. Am I okay to add or subtract these now? Okay, so let's think on our own. Don't say it out loud, but think of the common denominator you're gonna have. What is the common denominator? Okay. Just like you added and subtracted fractions in pre-algebra. Teaching that right now in another class, how to do exactly this. What do you do in order to get 18? Multiply the first fraction by two and multiply by Wait, just two? Like that? Okay, what we're really doing is multiplying by one, right? Just doing it in a very fancy way. 2 over 2 still makes 1. That means you're changing not the value of the function, just the way it looks. We're purposely unsimplifying this fraction so as to get a common denominator. That's what we're doing. So 2 over, so not 2. Sorry, I said 1 and I wrote 1. I meant 2 over 2 gives you 1. Hopefully you didn't write down the 1. That was the wrong thing to do. Yeah, 2 over 2 here. And here we're getting what? Yeah, that's going to give us 18, 18, exactly what we want it to be. So we're going to have to multiply these things. I want you to, to look back up here. We talked about this earlier. When you multiply 2 times 5 root 3, do you multiply the 2 times the 5, the 2 times the 3, or both the 2 times the 5 and the 2 times the 3? Not the 3? No, it's like multiplying 2 times 5x. You just do 2 times 5, and then you, you have that x, very much like a like term, okay? Or with a, a variable. So we, we get 10 root 3, not 10 root 6 not 10 root 6, over 18, and then minus 9 root 3. Notice this. I want you to really pay attention because I'm going to talk about this in about maybe 10... Let me, let me. When you're doing the root 3 times 9, do you notice that we don't get root 27? Do you guys see what I'm talking about? In order to get root 27, you'd have to have a square root around that thing. That would give you square root of 27. We talked about that, right? That's the using the product rule, putting together roots. In order to put together roots and get root 27, well, you have to have both of them being roots. Otherwise, if you don't, like we don't here, this is like 